Hey guys, Allison here with Natural Tasty Chef. Today I want to talk about what to eat for breakfast while on a candida diet. I get this question all the time and in fact I remember having the same question myself so I figured let's just dedicate a whole video to it. I still remember so vividly sitting in Ann Barak's office and asking her, Ann, what do I eat for breakfast? And at the time I was actually her personal chef and she had a slice of quiche that I had made her and I so clearly remember her picking it up and being like, well, Allison, you could eat this. Before I started a Candida diet, I was actually a strict vegan for about five to six years. Candida was the reason I started eat, um, incorporating animal protein again. So I was used to eating more like sweet breakfast, more like granola, smoothies, oatmeal, stuff like that. So it was a transition for me, but now I'm the total opposite. Now I eat animal protein and vegetables. I eat much more savory dishes for breakfast. And in fact, I notice if I don't eat animal protein at breakfast, I am not satisfied and I feel like I crave sugar for the rest of the day. If you are starting a candida diet and you feel like you crave sugar a lot, definitely pay attention to how much protein and fat that you are eating because making sure that you're eating enough of that will help curb those sweet cravings. Before jumping in, I just want to mention that I do have an online cooking course, Cooking for Candida, that's great for people who are feeling kind of lost as to where to start with a candida diet if you're not sure what to cook or how to even go about it. That's a great course. It goes through each section of a candida diet with these short demo videos. It goes through like breakfast, entrees, snacks, desserts. I even have a section on coffee alternatives and that's a really nice tool to have to help you navigate a candida diet. And I do have a 50% off coupon code that I will link in the description box below. I also have a candida diet meal plan and a candida diet cookbook, which are also great resources and I will link those below as well. So I'm gonna start with the obvious, which is by saying you can eat anything for breakfast. Like if it fits a candida diet, go ahead and eat it. You have this kind of mentality that breakfast should be, you know, pancakes or, eggs and bacon or something like that but really if you like it and you already have it in your fridge if you've had it like leftovers are a great thing to have for breakfast because you don't have to recreate something new and it's already made my personal favorite go-to these days is scrambled eggs with sauteed spinach and cassava flour tortillas now this is a really quick and easy option especially if you have cassava flour tortillas already in your fridge i also like to add avocado with that when i have the time and I feel like the combination of all of that with the eggs and the avocado, the spinach and the tortillas, it's really a complete breakfast and it keeps you feeling full and satisfied all day. Another great egg option would be a frittata or a quiche. Now a frittata is without a crust and a quiche incorporates a crust. So a frittata is a great recipe because you can add in any kind of veggie that you have on hand. If you have anything in the fridge that seems like it's about to spoil, it's a great time to use it, chop it up and throw it in that frittata. And if you have more time, a quiche is a more kind of, I would say like a more luxurious option or a more fancy option. And again, throw any type of vegetable that you have on hand in that. I have a great frittata recipe on my website and I have a quiche recipe in my cookbook and I will link both of those below. Another great egg dish that I love is shredded Brussels sprouts with eggs over easy. Shredding Brussels sprouts is a little more tedious, but if you're looking for a shortcut, um, Trader Joe's does sell shredded Brussels sprouts. The smaller you cut Brussels sprouts, the less gassy they'll make you, so it's a nice way to serve Brussels sprouts. There is a theory that softly cooked eggs are easier to digest. So try it out for yourself and see how your body likes it. But if you're starting a candida diet and you're noticing you're having some digestion issues with protein and things, you could try softly cooking eggs and see if that helps. And the shredded Brussels sprouts recipe is on my website and I will make sure to link that below. A final egg dish is hard boiled eggs. So this is great if you are in a rush or you don't have a lot of time to prepare anything in the morning. It's not really a complete breakfast, so I would serve that with maybe some avocado or some sauteed vegetables, but you can make a big batch of hard boiled eggs and just keep them in the fridge so it makes it nice like a quick and easy breakfast that you can have. For a sweeter breakfast, I love my strawberries and chia seed uh, parfait. Um, it uses coconut cream with fresh strawberries and chia seeds. You whip it together in a food processor and it kind of turns into like a strawberry cool whip, I guess. Uh, it's so delicious and it's beautiful. You could top that with shredded coconut 
or with some more fresh berries or cacao nibs or nuts or something like that to make it look um, more fancy. If the strawberries are in season, uh, it's perfectly sweet just the way it is. If not, you can always add a couple drops of liquid stevia to bump up the sweetness a little bit. It's a really fun and delicious breakfast and that recipe is also on my website, which I'll link below. My gluten-free lemon blueberry waffles are a more traditional type of breakfast. If you can, if you can tolerate grains, that is a nice option, especially if you're having like a brunch or it's a holiday or maybe a weekend or something like that. And this recipe is also on my website, which I'll link below. Paleo crepes are another great option and that uses eggs and tapioca or arrowroot flour. You could spread them with like a little nut butter or a little tahini butter or uh, stuff them with fresh fruit. And it's kind of a fancy little breakfast or a way to add more variety. That recipe is also on my website and I'll link that below. If you do eat granola, I do have a nutty power granola that's totally grain free. I personally feel like granola is more of like a snack now, but if that's something that you eat already and you feel like you're satisfied with, that is a great option. That recipe is in my cookbook and I also have a more traditional type of oat based granola in my cookbook using gluten-free oats. Now it's suggested to wait 60 days until you start incorporating gluten-free oats, so just keep that in mind. Finally, uh, green juice. A lot of people drink green juice in the morning. If you are into juicing already and you like the idea of that, I have a great recipe on my website that I'll link below. It's flavorful, it uses one green apple to sweeten it, and then the rest is just vegetables and fresh herbs, and it's so tasty. I personally wouldn't use that as my breakfast. I might add it with my breakfast, but if you're used to just drinking a juice in the morning, that is a great option. So all of these recipes are either on my website or in my cookbook, and I will link those all below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to get to them. Or if you have a breakfast recipe that I missed, I would love to hear about it. So please leave that in the comments below as well. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this one. Okay, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I will see you again soon.